Okay, hello everyone and thank you uh, for your patience as law enforcement continues to work through this investigation. UNC police issued a press release earlier today with information about the investigation that you all should have received. I'm Kevin Best, Senior Director of Media Relations at UNC Chapel Hill, and we're again joined here today by University of North Carolina Chancellor Kevin Guskowitz, UNC Chief of Police Brian James, Chapel Hill Police Chief Salisa Lehu, Orange County Sheriff Charles Blackwood, Orange County District Attorney Jeff Neiman, and Assistant Special Agent in Charge Beth Bogus of the FBI. I'm now going to turn it over to Kevin Guskowitz, Chancellor at UNC. Thank you all for being here uh, this afternoon as we provide updates uh, uh, to you uh, regarding the shooting on our campus uh, yesterday uh, afternoon. Uh, Chief James will be providing additional details on the uh, investigation. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm here just to, to share some additional updates. And uh, as you uh, well know, uh, we shared to our campus community uh, earlier today uh, the tragic loss of Dr. Zhe Jie Yen, who was killed yesterday in Kadil uh, Labs. Uh, Dr. Yen uh, was an associate professor in the Department of Applied Physical Sciences uh, in the College of Arts and Sciences. Uh, he joined our faculty in July of 2019. He was a beloved colleague, mentor, and a friend to so many on our campus, uh, and a father to two young children. My leadership team and I have met with uh, his colleagues in the Department of Applied Physical Sciences and Chemistry uh, to express our condolences. Uh, we've also had the opportunity to meet uh, with uh, members of Dr. Yen's family, and uh, we're doing everything that we can do to not only express our condolences, but certainly to assist them uh, as they endure this uh, terrible loss. I hope that you'll join me in praying uh, for uh, their loved ones, uh, as they are certainly hurting at this time. Uh, in honor of Dr. Yen's memory, uh, we will ring the bell tower uh, here on campus tomorrow at 1.02. Uh, and uh, in a moment of silence during uh, this time is, is what we're asking of, of everyone on our campus. Uh, we've shared uh, resources uh, for the people affected by this uh, traumatic event, and we'll continue to share uh, updates uh, on unc.edu and through Alert Carolina. We will not have classes tomorrow uh, so that our community can continue the healing process uh, and have access to the many resources that we're providing uh, to the campus uh, community. Uh, we will uh, return to classes and normal operations uh, beginning on Thursday of this week. Uh, over the past 24 hours, I've been uh, grateful for uh, the countless ways in which our community uh, has come together. I've spoken with faculty and students uh, who uh, sat together uh, through the lockdown uh, yesterday. Uh, and uh, our emergency operations center and the UNC police have been working tirelessly uh, throughout these uh, past many hours uh, to gather information and find answers as we continue uh, this investigation. Uh, together, our faculty, staff, and students followed the protocols that we had put in place and worked together to ensure each other's safety in accordance uh, with uh, our emergency management policy and our uh, Carolina Ready Campus Preparedness Program, something that, uh, again, we've worked hard to put in place over the past few years. Finally, I just want to thank the many people who have reached out to us uh, from around the world who have uh, come together to support our faculty, our staff, uh, and um, uh, certainly our students. Uh, I especially want to thank the UNC system uh, and our fellow UNC system schools for the, the ways in which they've reached out to message their support uh, of our community. I want to thank our Board of Trustees and our Board of Governors for their steadfast support. Uh, in this time of profound sadness, I'm grateful for the strength of our Tar Heel community. And I urge us to continue to build and strengthen our community together. I, uh, I'm going to thank um, uh, you for all that you're doing, and, and now I'm going to turn it over to Chief James for an update uh, on the investigation, and we'll be happy to take some questions. Thank you, Chancellor Guskowitz. I'm Brian James, Chief of Police for the UNC Police Department. I want to start by offering my condolences to the family of Professor Zhe Jie Yin, the victim in yesterday's shooting. We are deeply saddened by the loss of one of our Carolina community members. On behalf of all UNC police, I extend my deepest condolences to Professor Yen's family. You will continue to be in our thoughts and prayers. 
Here are the updates we have to share from yesterday's shooting. The suspected shooter is Ty Lee, Ty Lee Chi, a graduate student at the university. He is being held without bail at the Orange County Jail. Through the investigation in the last 24 hours, we have determined that the victim and suspect knew each other and the suspect went directly to the victim and then left Caudill Labs. Right now, the suspect is facing felony charges of first degree murder and possession of a firearm on educational property. His first appearance, appearance was earlier today at 2 p.m. He is being held without bond. Additional charges may be added as the investigation continues. The suspect was arrested yesterday by our partners at the town of Chapel Hill Police Department on Williams Circle in Chapel Hill. The suspect's car was located on campus and has been impounded and is being processed by the FBI's evidence response team. The firearm used in yesterday's shooting has not been recovered. We continue a thorough search for the firearm and any additional evidence. <laughs> FBI Victim Services has been providing services to the victim's family and identified witnesses. At this time, it is still too early to establish a definitive motive. This will be something that we will continue to determine throughout the course of the investigation. Caudill Labs will be closed as the investigation continues. We are increasing visibility of our law enforcement officers on campus, especially during peak times of the day to provide reassurance to our campus community. If anyone has any additional information regarding this case, we ask that you please contact the UNC Police Department at 919-962-8100. That's 919-962-8100. I again would like to thank all of our partners uh, that assisted all the first responders yesterday and we are forever grateful and we will continue to do everything that we can to ensure the safety of our UNC community. I'll turn it back over to Kevin. Okay, like yesterday, we'll have time for a, little, a limited number of questions. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We're going to get a wireless mic to you. Please identify yourself, your media outlet, and ask your question. We'll go first here on the right. Hi there, Aaron Thomas here with WRL News. I had a question about the uh, shooting at Cottle Labs. Were there any other people in the room? And secondly, were there any previous threats between Yen and Chi? Not prepared to speak on if there was anyone else in the room, but we do know that the building was occupied by a number of people at the time of the incident. Uh, the, uh, as far as any kind of uh, conversation that happened between the victim and suspect, we are still working to determine what that may have been. So that is still under investigation. Next question, our front row. Hi, Julia Ainsley with NBC News. What can you tell us about the relationship between the student and the professor? Were they currently in a class together and did this happen in a classroom? We are still exploring the relationship uh, between the professor as well as the suspect. Um, we cannot be specific at this point about where it happened. It is still under investigation. We still have that building secured as we are, we are still looking at evidence as well as doing multiple searches. Second row left here. Thank you. Good afternoon. Mark Merrick from Fox News. Uh, you mentioned that the FBI is assisting in the investigation. I'm just curious, is it because of him being a foreign national, or what was the reason that the FBI is involved? And in terms of motive, is there an indication of what it, you believe it may be, you're just not ready to say definitively, or is the suspect not cooperating with police at this point? For you, Chief. Yeah. We had a number of agencies that responded to the university literally within minutes. The FBI was one of those agencies. Uh, they willingly lent their resources to us, especially in the area of response and also evidence collection. Uh, their organization uh, is, is top notch, second to none, and so they offered that resource and we gladly accepted it. Um, what was your other question, if you could repeat that? I'm just curious, is he, was he cooperative at all when officers arrested him in terms of, did he make any statements within that arrest? I know obviously the motive is, is still under investigation, but did he say, 
anything that would indicate of what happened, or is he not cooperating at all with investigators? I can't speak to the uh, to what the suspect said at this point. We we are still uh, unraveling all the information we have, so I'm not prepared to speak on that. Hi, I'm Corey Dean with the News and Observer. Um, this would be either for Chancellor Guskowitz or Chief James. Could you talk about how students and faculty are prepared for situations like this? Um, I've talked a lot to a lot of students today who say they knew what to do because they've grown up with having these issues, uh, but they felt like they weren't given a lot of information from the university. Um, I'm just wondering if you could talk about how information for situations like this should be or is disseminated to students and faculty. So as I talked about yesterday and talked about a bit in our campus message today, uh, we uh, pride ourselves on preparing uh, our campus uh, to be a, a safe environment every year. There's nothing more important than the, uh, the safety and well-being of, uh, of our students, faculty, staff, and visitors to our campus. Uh, we, um, you know, over the past few years have really um, put together a, a program around uh, being prepared for these events. We have a, uh, a, an emergency action preparedness plan. We have a, uh, a, uh, an active shooter protocol that's part of that. Uh, we are part of the national um, uh, run, hide, fight program that, uh, that, that is, is out there that we try to make students aware of and faculty. Last year, uh, we began a program by which uh, all of our classrooms and uh, auditoriums where classes are held uh, there's a QR code that's uh, provided for faculty uh, so that at the beginning of the semester they have access to, uh, to know exactly what the protocol is uh, for that particular uh, site and uh, to share that with students. Uh, uh, our resident assistants uh, play an important role uh, in our uh, many residence halls. We, we house over about 9,000 students on our campus and, um, and they are uh, prepared uh, for these situations. So we do everything possible, but we also learn from uh, other campuses and colleagues around the country that uh, uh, have uh, had these uh, tragic events and so, and we'll continue to learn from this event as well. Chief, you may want to add to that. Uh, just to uh, reiterate some of the things that the Chancellor just discussed um, around the emergency action plan, another layer, and we discussed this briefly yesterday, uh, we also do uh, a, a lot of education on campus throughout police department. Uh, Chancellor mentioned run, hide, fight. That is uh, something that we teach throughout campus. Uh, we also do a number of security surveys uh, where we go to specific buildings and we do get a number of requests because the buildings are unique. Every, I don't know that there are two buildings on this campus that are the same. So it's very important that each person uh, that either uh, works or takes classes in that building or lives in that building is aware of what to do in a situation like this. So we certainly try to uh, uh, push that information out as much as possible. I know that it's also included in uh, much of the initial uh, orientation uh, information uh, for our incoming students each year. And we also do our best to make sure that we continually push out that information so our already existing students stay familiar with the protocol in case we have a situation like this. All right, go to the third row. Trey Shirt here. Uh, Alex Perez with ABC News. This question is for you. Uh, Chief James, uh, two questions. The first one being, did the suspect just walk out of the building after the shooting and as the lockdown was happening, was he walking through campus, do we know? We don't know his exact, exact direct uh, uh, path of travel. Uh, we do believe that he exited uh, the building shortly after the incident occurred. We don't know exactly if he may have gone to another part of the building and then left, but we do know that he exited the building, the building very quickly. Our officers, our UNC police officers, got there very quickly and entered the building, uh, entered Caudill, uh with a team uh, within minutes. And we did not locate the suspect at that time, so we know that he must have exited that building very quickly. Uh, right after the incident. And then secondly, the suspect had some questionable social media posts online. Uh, are, are those posts part of the investigation? And if so, what are you looking for? We will look at every uh, ounce of information available about the suspect that may include social media posts, but certainly looking for any uh, information out there that may have indicated uh, what his intentions were and, and why he actually did it. Hi, Kelly Kendall, Carolina Week. Chief James, this question is for you. 
You touched on students. I'm wondering about instructors. I've talked to several students who say that their professors also did not seem to know what to do. They left their doors open and or unlocked. And I'm wondering if teachers, or instructors, professors, if they're specifically trained in this protocol. Uh, yes, that, that information is disseminated to every uh, faculty and staff member on campus. Um, individual situations, we certainly will look at those. There are certainly some lessons to be learned uh, from this incident. Uh, oftentimes when a critical incident occurs, uh, people are reacting off of emotion. And sometimes, uh, you know, we do forget what to do. I'm not saying that happened, but sometimes that does happen. But we also uh, need to ensure that we stay up to speed on what's going on. Chapel Hill, the town of Chapel Hill and the UNC community is an overall safe community with very low crime. But we also have to understand that we can't take that for granted and we always have to be prepared in case we have a situation like this. So we will go back and look at uh, anything that we could have done better and we'll make sure that, uh, that it doesn't uh, ever repeat itself. And we'll also ensure, uh, do our best to ensure that we never have another incident like this on campus. Thank you. Yes, Elon Mohammed, CBS 17. Just regarding the suspect being taken into custody, if you could elaborate if that location was his home. And I know you said you can't say what he did or didn't say, but would you say he cooperated during the process of being taken into, into custody and were any electronics seized as well? He was taken into custody without incident, meaning that there was no force used. I uh, cannot speak specifically to what evidence uh, was seized at that time. And was that his home? I'm sorry? Was that his home where he was taken into custody? That's what I understand at this point is that that is where he uh, resides. Yes. I just want to clarify a little bit on that point as well. I'm Alex, NBC News. There, you're saying, originally in your first statement, you said that he was taken into custody at the police department, and then you're saying that he was, was he actually physically taken into custody at his apartment complex and then booked at the police department, or was he taken into custody, did he willingly go to the police department? I'm just, I'm a little confused on those details. I'm sorry, if, if I'm mistaken, I apologize. I don't recall saying he was taken into custody at the police department. He was taken into custody uh, on Williams Circle. On Williams Circle. Yes, yes. Uh, Andy Fies, ABC News, uh, for the chief. Two quick questions. One, I know that you haven't recovered the weapon yet, but is there uh, any determination as to whether the weapon was legally acquired or not? That's question one. And question two is, on an open campus like this, is there consideration to prevention measures such as metal detectors in buildings or any any further sort of effort to block access uh, to those carrying weapons? Yes, without the weapon uh, in, in further context around the suspect, it is not possible at this time to determine whether or not it was obtained uh, legally or illegally. As far as uh, additional safety measures, again, we will look at this incident and we will see what we can do better. Uh, that could involve additional safety measures, but we're not prepared to say what those may be at this time. Chief, or, or uh, this is Josh Chapin, uh, ABC 11, uh, I want to clarify about how he was taken into custody because my understanding was that that William Circle, at least from talking to eyewitnesses and talking to neighbors, was not where he lived. Perhaps you can shed some light on whether he was maybe headed home and he was trying to get away from law enforcement. Um, and maybe ditch the gun somewhere because the neighbors out there told us that it's not where he lived. Okay, that, as far as, to my knowledge, that information from the neighbors is not accurate. We, we have identified his residence. Okay. And, and we are uh, still looking at that location as part of the investigation. And do you think, this is asked maybe a little bit, but is there a better way to convey information to the student body, to your employees, to the staff around campus when something like this is going on? We enacted all of our protocols as far as communication. Uh, we broadcast the alert uh, immediately. Uh, the call came in to 911 at, at 102. Uh, the sirens uh, 
were uh, activated at 104 and an alert Carolina message uh, went out. That goes out a number of ways to include text message. In the immediate aftermath of an incident like this, it is very chaotic and it is uh, very difficult to disseminate what information is accurate and what's inaccurate. We were getting a lot of information initially. Uh, I think I mentioned yesterday, we had calls of additional shots fired, we had calls of additional victims, we had calls of additional suspects. Uh, none of that information uh, was true once we were able to vet it. But certainly, uh, we will go back and we will look at how the information was disseminated. If there's any way that we can improve upon it, we certainly will. But everything that we had laid out in protocol as far as how we push out that information uh, to our student body, uh, that was done. But if there's a better way to do it, we will certainly uh, work to find out what that is. All right, take our last question. Nixon, Nixon Norman with WFMY News 2. Um, I know you said the car was impounded. Did he make his way back to Williams Circle on foot or did he drive his way back there? And two, do you guys know how many shots were fired? One singular shot or were there multiple? Uh, by all indications, uh, the car was driven uh, to campus sometime uh, yesterday morning uh, and the car was still in place and he was located on foot on Williams Circle. Uh, so at, at this point, we believe, uh, uh, unless we gather additional information, that he left on foot headed towards Williams Circle. We cannot say how many shots were fired at this point. As uh, more information uh, comes out and, and evidence is collected, uh, that information may be available, but we don't know at this time. Thank you. All right, thank you everyone. That's all the time we have for today. We'll be in touch with uh, further updates as they become available, but uh, thank you for attending today. Thanks.